Brightstorm has thousands of high-quality videos covering all major subjects. Please check out more at www.brightstorm.com. All right, so we're going to talk about double replacement reactions, also known as double displacement reactions. Uh, this is an exchange of ions between two compounds. Um, typically, what's produced is a, what we call a precipitate. That's a solid within an aqueous solution or a liquid solution. Um, we'll actually get a picture of what that looks like soon. Um, all right, so here's a skeletal equation of what uh, a double placement reaction looks like. We have AX, and this, is, this happens in ionic compounds. So we have AX, and we know that A is a metal, and X is a nonmetal, plus BY. Again, B is the metal, Y is the nonmetal. Don't forget, uh, metals always come first in ionic equations. So they're going to actually change up partners, okay? So metals don't want to be with metals, and nonmetals don't want to be with nonmetals. So we're actually going to, um, they're actually going to switch partners and switch them completely. So the A is now not going to be with X anymore. It's now going to be with Y. And the B is not going to be with Y anymore. It's now going to be with X, okay? An easy way to remember this is the outside ions are going to come together, and the inside ions are now going to come together. But don't forget, metals will always, always, always come first, okay? Do not ever write the nonmetal first. So in this case, what's going to happen is A, Y is going to be a product. A is a metal, don't forget, and Y is our nonmetal, plus B, X. B is our metal, X is our nonmetal. Don't, uh, don't get that mixed up. That can actually get you into trouble, okay? So this is a good example of a, a skeletal example of a displacement reaction or double displacement reaction. So let's look at um, an actual double displacement reaction. We have two ionic compounds that come together, aluminum carbonate and potassium oxide. And um, what they're going to do, the, two, the metal is now going to bond with this nonmetal. And this metal is going to replace, is going to go with that nonmetal. Polyatomic ions are going to act as nonmetals. Okay, so um, we have these, sub these subscripts at the bottom, two, three, and this two. Um, we're actually going to ignore them for now. Do not, do not um, use those as when you're actually making your products. Just ignore them, we'll deal with them when we balance the equation, okay? So we're just gonna deal with the metal. The aluminum itself is gonna bond with the oxygen, okay? So how do they come together? Well, aluminum makes a plus three ion, oxygen makes a minus two, cross those to make it even, and we come up with a new product, Al2O3, okay? And now potassium is gonna bond with carbonate. carbonate is CO3, that is carbonate, so we're going to actually keep that within the um, compound. So we have K, which is going to make a plus ion, and sorry about that, carbonate, which is a minus two, minus two um, charge. We're going to cross those, and we're going to get K2CO3, okay? Um, and these are our products. And so now we have to balance it to make sure, to, um, make sure that the elements uh, are the same on both sides. So we're going to just do that. And I'm just going to change that just for room's sake. Okay. So let's start with aluminum. We have two aluminum on the reactant side, two on the product side, so that's okay. Um, let's talk about carbonates. We have one on the, oops. Actually, I have three. I didn't copy that correctly. We have three on the reactant side. I'm going to put three on the product side. That means we have six potassiums. We're going to make six potassiums, so we're going to put a three here. And that, pretty, that means we have three oxygens. We have three oxygens, so this is completely balanced. This is an overall um, double replacement reaction. Now, we actually can take this a step further and do net ionic equations. That's right. Those are actually um, the, the next step in dealing with the double, the double displacement reactions. Um, but that's going to be shown in another video. Okay, so let's actually see this in action. We said that a, a precipitate occurs, so we're actually going to see what a precipitate looks like. So let's do that. We're going to do a double replacement reaction with potassium chromate and silver nitrate. Here's my potassium chromate, and I see that when I add silver nitrate to it, I am forming a nice red precipitate. And the precipitate is silver chromate. It's a double replacement reaction. We are going to mix potassium iodide and lead nitrate, lead to nitrate. So I've got my lead nitrate in here, and I'm going to add some potassium iodide to it, and we're going to see right away that 
we get a precipitate of lead iodide. I'm not sure if you see this, but what a pretty precipitate. All right, so the two reactions that you saw are written up here on the board. Notice the silver chromate is the precipitate. Notice I noticed I wrote that as a solid as its state of matter. Um, and down here we have the, the, rea the second reaction that's had the yellow precipitate, the lead. Notice again I wrote that as a solid P P PPT. You might see frequently that just indicates that, it that it's a precipitate. And those are very, very common examples of what a double replacement reaction is. By two. I can't do this with you two laughing back there. Work it. Work it. So if we had, no, that's not right, three coplanar points. So have you ever gotten off an airplane? <laughs> that should be. Less than. Yeah. Dang. Is it like 500 degrees in here or what? All right, so when you're in chemistry class, you're going to be doing a lot of work. You're going to be bleh, starting over. So as an example, we could consider like you've got a chain hanging from two, um, two fix. 